Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Let's Chat video. In case you're new to this channel, I do one of these every so often to keep people up to date on what the plans are for the channel, uh, what's going on behind the scenes, what sort of videos you can expect to come sooner or later. Uh, this is the general extra sort of bonus info. Some channels do this kind of shit, uh, some don't, because a lot of people don't give a shit what happens behind the camera, but I thought, fuck it. We haven't done one of these in a while, and there's a lot of things I like to talk about. So we're just going to get on with it, all right? You'll get normal videos next week, of course, but um, this is a chatty one for now, because there's a lot of things I want to cover, a lot of things I want to tell you to keep you up to date. And I can't be fucked to put up a million sodding YouTube posts just to tell you this shit. So we'll try and cover as much ground as we can. Here we go. First thing is simple thing. As some of you may know, I've recently had surgery. Uh, I've had wisdom teeth taken out. You may think, oh, teeth taken out. It's not a big thing. Yeah, my teeth were growing horizontal, meaning the teeth were literally going this way. They weren't going up or down. They go that way. Pushing every other tooth next to it. Domino effect, fucking everything up. So instead of just pulling a tooth out, they slice you open. They drill it to bits to take out the bits. And then they sew you up and they pump you with drugs. I've had some good shit, let me tell you that. I am. This also made me a bit dizzy and a bit dopey. And that's not good because right now I'm trying to get as much money together as I can. Some of you will know from the past that I am not the most financially well-off person in the world. I don't try to hide it. Why bother hide it? But I also don't boo-hoo about it. Woe is me, give me money. Do you see anything on this channel saying give me money? All right, there's a... There's a thing below the video where you can do it, but that's there by default and I don't... Nope, never had anyone click that. Give a fuck. But, where was I? Yes, being skinned, that's great. I've taken on a second job. Two jobs I do now, that's great. One in the day, one for a bit in the evening. Luckily it's not a long job, but you wouldn't believe how knackered you are after that little extra time of work. Holy fuck. It's not going to last forever, but it's me being incredibly tired for a while. So, I'm doing my best, alright? I'm doing my best. Which is also going to explain this next thing I'll talk about. Sega Head episodes. Sega Head episodes are the creme de la creme of videos on this channel. Do they do better than any others? No. <laughs> the videos that do the best on this channel are controller reviews. I don't know why, but that is a fact. If you look at any of the videos, look at the ones with controllers in them, where they're focused on controllers, those ones do the best. I don't know why. I will keep doing them, but because I'm skint, I can't go out of my way to buy new controllers every week to do videos like that, plus I'd be pretty bored shitless. I, I wouldn't want to do it. No. That, yeah. No. But anyway, Sega Head episodes, this has not been the year for that, has it? There's only been two. Normally, I do one every two months, so you get an average of six a year, on average. First year I did them, uh, I put in a lot more time to that, so there was more in that one year, I think, but fuck it, this year you've only had two. That's because the first one to come out was the big collab video. That was a big video, it took a lot of time, took a lot of effort, and there were a lot of people contributing to it, which made things more difficult. There was a lot of back and forth in that, and it sucked the fun out of it really sucked the fun out of it for me. Don't get me wrong, I am very pleased with the end result, the end product, the end video. I just hated the journey, it was shit. It's no one's fault, I'm not blaming anyone, I'm not blaming anyone that contributed to the video. I'm not blaming Telesplash Gaming or anyone else from Retro Refresh. It was just a cunt to do. So it sapped a lot of the fun out of it for me and for a while I didn't know what I wanted to do for a Sega Head episode. Then I came up with the idea of that, um, how to be a gamer one. That was that was great fun because it was stupid and it was retarded. And then I asked people in polls, what console would you want a Sega Head episode to focus on for a game? And then when you picked the console, you ended up picking Dreamcast, you went with Shenmue as that game. Great. <laughs> That's not a short fucking game. So I reckon it'll end up being a bit like the Soul Reaver video I did that time. Really love it doing that video it's gonna be like a big review covering it but of course i gotta go through Sh shenmue not like with a fine tooth comb but i gotta go through it thoroughly so that will take time so i've come to the conclusion this year just flat out isn't the year for sega head episodes i'm gonna work on that and then that'll be the first sega head episode 
of next year. I know it means you're not getting another one this year, but then next year I can really put my all into it and get some decent stuff out of there. And annoyingly, whilst going through this thing, asking people what they wanted, I had two ideas for new Sega episodes. One of them's a collab, won't tell you who with, but person I'm uh, talking about with, come have a lot of jokes and it's like, this is gonna be a silly one, excellent. And because it's only collab with one person, it'll be bearable. Um, another one is a Sega episode, it's just me, and that one, it's Master System, but it's not like we've covered before, so it's gonna be good fun, and yeah, already, if I can work on it, that'll be three new Sega Head episodes for next year, already plans developing. So that's great. Pisser is, the second job I'm doing right now takes up a lot of time for making YouTube videos, so I have to do this first. I need money. Yeah, collecting has come to a halt, but having said that, hypocritically, I'll tell you some more stuff about collecting in a minute and what's been happening behind the scenes. Um, Anyway, so that's it. That was Sega episodes. That's that bit of info. You won't get another one this year. You will get your Shenmue one. I fucking promise. Next year is going to be the year for that shit. I'm going to fucking work my hardest to make it happen. Oh, yes. Next topic. Heatwave sucks dick. Now, this is all. And, ah, yes. Something I've been working on for a while and putting a lot of... Not so much time into, because time, as I said, I ain't got much. But passion been putting a lot of passion into this some of you know that i am working on a book but not just any book i'm working on an audiobook it's going to be audiobook first book second so if anyone likes audiobooks um it's gonna how do i put it? there's alien books on audible they're called audible originals i think sorry got an itch and uh well, also i scratch that and talk to you because i'm so professional oh it's good the audiobook is going to be like one of them Audible originals, in a sense. Uh, I have written a fair chunk now. I'm really happy with what's going on so far. Uh, I got to a point where I thought, you know what? What I've done so far, would that work as an audiobook? And I started getting paranoid thinking, you know, can, can I even do this? Can I successfully do this? Am I capable of doing it? So I thought, rather than continue writing for a minute, I will just make a mock version of this as an audiobook just this one chapter to see if it's any good and then I will send it to someone and ask them to listen to it and give them my honest opinion after I had sent it I read through it and listened through it and there was a couple of things I knew I was going to tweak there were a few things I thought that could be better when this person who fuck it let's reveal it it's Tom Weston from do you know Tom all right YouTube aside Tom is a very good friend of mine i highly value his opinion and the best thing is he listens to audiobooks so you know if i'd sent this to someone that didn't listen to audiobooks at all they probably wouldn't think much of it because it's an acquired taste audiobooks they just are he listened to it and the only negative things he had to say the only negative things were the things i had already thought i wanted to change he said you've said like uh for example man here a couple of extra times within just one sentence surely you should just use a thesaurus for fuck's sake i was like yeah i know when recording it reading it and all that it wasn't there it was only later on i went oh dick i've done that <laughs> but those were the only things he pointed out which was great he wasn't trying to butter me up he wasn't trying to be super nice i said be honest and he knows if i say for fuck's sake be honest he'll be brutally honest all the way he's good like that that's why i value his opinion so much he will not fuck me around he will not lie he will be honest he was honest love him for it Tom's a great guy, and um, the work on the audiobook has gone good. I'm much more confident that it, it can become a real thing. I don't know when, I don't know how long it'll take, but it's given me the confidence. I know I can do it, it will take time, and um, I was talking with the idea of sharing with you that demo, as it were. Again, the demo hasn't been fixed. Why bother fixing that? I've just fixed the script, and I know what to do next time I decide to record a part. But I don't know if I'll put the demo in here. Probably not. If you guys want to hear how the audiobook is going, maybe I will put that demo out as a separate bid. Because it's fairly long. It's like 12 minutes. And this is a chat video. It doesn't need to have that there. If you want to hear it, let me know. We'll make a separate thing with just a little intro explaining what it is to those who don't know, and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's the audiobook. That's how that's going. While we're on the subject of Tom, 
me and Tom talk a lot of things outside of YouTube, but of course we still talk YouTube stuff. And it's amazing how like we get some advice from our mate Mike, Retro Gamer Boy sometimes, because he is the kind of guy that will analyze, research, pay attention, look at the numbers, all that sort of crap when it comes to YouTube. And he clearly knows what he's doing because the motherfucker just hit 20,000 subs. Well done, Mike. You bastard. But he gives us advice sometimes, freely. We, we only ask for it on occasion. You know, I rarely ask for it because I don't care that much. But he does openly offer advice, and I will take it. Why not? I'm not a complete dick. And then one thing he said to me and Tom is that too much variety, too much variety can hurt a channel. And I hate it, but he's right. The thing is, I love having variety on my channel. I do. I love doing Slice of Retro. I love doing the podcast. I love doing Sega Ed episodes, Let's Plays, Game Poke topics, controller reviews, all this stuff. Which is bad. Channels shouldn't have too many different things. Look at GameSack, highly successful YouTube channel. Same fucking thing every video, pretty much. But highly entertaining. I love GameSack. I watch GameSack all day long. They're great. Um, Happy Console Gamer, another fantastic channel. It's the same damn thing all the time. That's basically like my game poke videos. Focus on a topic, talk to the camera about it, have a good chat with no one. You know? Very enjoyable channel, very successful channel, does one type of thing. So here's how the channel's been doing since the variety has dropped. The variety has dropped uh, because of my work. Uh, I haven't been able to do as much. So for a while, it was just Let's Plays. For a while, it was just Master System stuff. There's been a little bit of a break in that because it's me and I love covering different shit. Can't help myself. Funny thing is, since doing a little bit less Master System, the channel's not doing as well, but only by a fraction of an amount because the channel's actually doing a lot better since I stopped doing the podcast. I stopped doing the podcast to... Uh, focus on the audiobook because there was just no more time to work on that and that was a thing I want to do that book before I die god damn it so I had to make a sacrifice somewhere and the podcast was the thing to do maybe the podcast will come back one day or maybe not but it's fair to say I probably shouldn't because YouTube makes it abundantly clear that the channel is much better off without it since stopping subs have come in uh, at a fair rate whereas they weren't before views are damn good uh, yeah, yeah, so, mm. but on one side of the coin, there will be a bit more variety because soon Slice of Retro is starting up, in fact, tomorrow, this Sunday, Slice of Retro will start for its new season coming back, now you may not remember, so I'll go through it again, Slice of Retro is just little videos that cover one game at a time in a silly short way, it's a nice little Slice of Retro, did them a while ago and it was on random games each time. Now it's going to be a season on a console. That season will last for a month. So four videos, four Sundays we get Slice of Retro. There'll be a break for a week or two. Then it will come back with a new console covered. So as some of you may know, this first console that's being covered is Atari 2600. There's four games. I'm happy with each video. I hope you enjoy them. After that, I'm thinking Game Boy, then maybe Mega Drive. But I may swap that order around. I don't know what I want to do. I just know I'm going to have fun doing it. So, yeah, there's that. Oh, yeah, there was one thing. Uh, search for Sega videos now that they're back for a little while because car boot season only lasts so long. Uh, they're helping the channel a fair bit. Um, getting new people in, checking it out. The channel, I mean, it's great. Um, I forgot to put in a bit of footage on that video where I had praised and wanted you to check out my mate Rob's channel, Comic Rob. Um, my son got a clone console. It's this cheap piece of crap. It cost eight quid in the box. It's like new as F. It's obviously a fake Super Nintendo Mini slash classic. It's got a shit ton of games on there. Shit ton of games. No save system. We've tested it. Um, there are no games on there at all that uh, even pretend to have saves. There's no like Final Fantasies on there. There's nothing to make you think, it saves, and then it doesn't. So that's good. If you're not going to save, don't put a game in there that says it saves and then it doesn't. Password's fine. Save, no. It's also got some weird mods, like there's one NES game on there, which is meant to be the Jackie Chan game, clearly, but it's got Mario's face on it. Fuck knows why, but it's introducing my son to the world of crappy hacks and crappy mods. So, fuck it. Um, 
there's that thing. In terms of game collecting, things have gone a bit weird. Out of nowhere, probably thanks to Car Boot Season, I keep getting Super Nintendo games. I got some from friends, uh, some from Alex of Nintendo Arcade, some from Car Boot. I just keep getting Super Nintendo games. And I only ever had like a small shelf for them. That's fucking full. So I had to build a whole new bloody thing to put them in. And while I was at it, I thought, sod it. The Atari collection has always been in a cardboard box. Let's shift it so it shares. And now i got this new thing in the game collection. You'll see it in some videos. Obviously, Sega Head videos, you'll see it. The Sega Head episodes, dickhead. Mm. There, you'll see new thing with new Super Nintendo games. So that's what that fucking thing is in the collection. Finally got to build a thing for gaming rather than just being in the garden, dying from the heat and having a shit ton of barbecues. Did I mention the heat wave sucks? Yeah, it sucks. Another thing in terms of collecting, there's one game that I've wanted for the longest time and I haven't been able to justify buying it because it's well over £100. In fact, I think it's well over £150. Fantasy Star 4. I have one on the Master System. I have Toon 3 on the Mega Drive in very good condition. 4 is meant to be the best Fantasy Star ever. I have never played it. I have the means to play it. For fuck's sake, I've got Mega Drive Mini. i got uh, that Mega Drive Classics thing you can get on PS4 and Switch and Xbox. I got that. Never play Fantasy Star 4. Because I'm obsessed, I think you have to complete all the Fantasy Stars in order first. I've done one. It's a great game. Two, I don't like. One day I will force myself through it. Three, I've never tried because I've never done two. So obviously I've never done four. But also I would like to own four. And my obsession with the other th kind of stopped me from getting it. Also the fact I can't afford it. I found a way around it. I found a deal on eBay, 30 quid, the Japanese one. That's right, I don't give a fuck. The case is in fantastic condition, the booklet is, the car is, it's all bloody good. But the artwork on the Jap one is awesome! Now, I have that obsession filled. I have the game, I paid a lot less for it, and um, I can just play on my Mega Drive Mini when the time comes. I know I'm weird. If you didn't know this, hi, welcome to the channel. Speaking of fantasy, in my very little free time, I've been playing Final Fantasy 1. I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy games. Well, 1 to 10. 10 to sucked. 11, I played it a bit. It's not really my thing, them online ones. So 11 and 14, meh. 12, could not get on with the uh, new battle system. Couldn't get on with it. 13 is obviously dog shit. 14, we've already talked about. 15, you know what? 15 were all right. Had great gameplay. Um, bit buggy, I found at times when I played it. It's probably fixed and patched by now. But that was a great game. Story was shit. It made a lick of sense. You know, it made fucking no sense. All because you had to get the DLC to get the full parts of the story, and I refused. So I got the hacked down version of the story and thought, I don't care. I'm not paying extra for the story. It's final fucking fantasy. That's like buying a FIFA game, but I have to get DLC for the fucking football to kick. You know what I mean? I mean, it's shit. But anyway, I wanted to play Final Fantasy 1. Um, it's, it's sort of like a badge of honor if you love Final Fantasy. To be able to say, yes, I've completed the first one. You know, that's a big thing. We didn't get NES Final Fantasy over here. We didn't get it. We got the PS1 version, which is uh, pros and cons to that game. Let's be fair. It's not a terrible remake, but it's not a great one pros and cons they fixed some of the bugs they've made the spells better but they've made some other things stupid like the emboss is apparently a lot lot harder than the nes one which is hard to believe because the nes one's hard as fuck as it is but the nes one some spells for example don't fucking work they just flat out don't work or worse they do the bloody opposite like uh i think there's a spell where you can make your party um evade more or take more hits or something like that and instead it does it to the enemy it looks like the spells worked on you, but it's the enemy that's now easier to evade shit. Buggy, I know, but that's how it's programmed. I recently managed to complete it. I was playing it on the NES Classic um, because of convenience. Remember, we didn't get it over it. But I was only using save states when I was at an inn or using a tent slash cabin slash house because I wanted to keep the save states real. So I wasn't like, oh, there's a boss in a minute. Do a save state. Or, oh, this bit might be tough. Do a save state. I wasn't save stating all the fucking way to the end. I was only save stating at the main saves because I thought, 
I don't trust saving ever. I'm the kind of guy that will play Pokemon Red version and manually save 68 times because I'm a dick. Had to do it with Final Fantasy 1. So, yeah. Aside from that, I think I've covered everything. Lot of rambling, but these chat videos often are. Um, slice of Retro tomorrow. Normal videos next week. I think I'll put out a Let's Play next week because we haven't had one in a little while. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, going on holiday soon, so I'll be doing some vacation -y stuff again because there'll be some arcades and shit, hopefully, where I'm going. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. I, if you're new to the channel, um, thanks for sticking around. That's the kind of shit you got coming up, all the stuff explained in this video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. Fuck it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.